A few months ago, I pitched a video game for the first time ever, and it was a lot of fun. You guys seemed to really enjoy the video. I got a lot of nice comments and cool ideas for what y'all want to see. And while making that video, I tried to think of other games that'd be fun to create a sequel to, and the first one that came to my mind is Bully 2. Okay, I'm frightened, and I've got a weak bladder. Hey, Aggie. You can clean my shoes. This school is filled with wild you want me to steal your stuff back from a bloodthirsty mob of angry greaseballs? <laughs> the first Bully is one of Rockstar's most beloved games aside from GTA and Red Dead series respectively. It was a major part of a lot of people's childhoods and it's still pretty relevant to this day having been played by countless Let's Play channels over the years like PewDiePie and Jacksepticeye to having a thriving fan community all over the internet even a lot of them being on this platform. There's multiple channels dedicated to talking entirely about this game. That's how loved it still is. In Bully 2 has been one of the most teased and discussed sequels from Rockstar's lineup. It's been in and out of development a shit ton of times, and as of right now, we have basically no idea on whether the series will fully return or not. But unfortunately, if I'd have to guess, I'd say it's currently dead in the water or at least not gonna happen for a very long time. But that can't stop us from dreaming and coming up with our own ideas. So welcome to my pitch video, and of course, please let me know any of your ideas in the comments below for any of the content you want to see in a Bully 2 because I love having the discussions and hearing other people's suggestions. It's just so fun. I should also clarify real quick that I'm not a game developer or anything. I'm not an expert on how any of this shit works. I'm just a guy who's a really big fan of Rockstar and a really big fan of Bully and wants to basically talk about my dream version of this game that we might not ever see. So you don't have to personally vibe with it. I would understand if you don't because everybody probably has different ideas for what they want to see. So once again, feel free to let me know what your perfect Bully 2 would be down below. I'm going to start out by explaining the basic premise of the sequel before I take some time to delve deeper into the specifics of the gameplay and the story. But basically my idea for Bully 2 takes place only a couple years after the original. Jimmy is going to return as the main protagonist because I feel like it's something that Rockstar Games never really does that often, except for like a few examples. And the character himself is so beloved and tied to this game that I think it would be kind of strange to replace him. This obviously means that a lot of the side characters will return from the first game as well. Pete is still the head boy of the school and seems to be more calm and collected now. Now, having finally found something he's really good at. Zoe is also still here and Jimmy and her have been taking things slow ever since the events of the first game. I'll get more into the specifics of the dating mechanics and stuff later though. And of course many others that we fondly remember from the first game will return as well. It's been about a year and a half or so since the events of the first game and his life's been going pretty great since then. But of course his happiness is short lived as a new private school with a way higher budget opens its doors on the other side of Bulworth. This school is such a step up from Bulworth that it will basically look like a college in comparison Harrison. <laughs> You'll have new fancier buildings to explore, all with unique classes and scenery in this massive campus. Parents have been enrolling their kids there by the dozens, leaving Bulworth with only half the student body it used to have. Dr. Crabblesnitch is informed by the town hall that Bulworth will be shut down in favor of the new school if it keeps growing at the rate that it's been. Obviously not wanting to lose everything he fought so hard to build up, Jimmy and his friends decide to take the school down from the inside. He eventually enrolls himself here and this is where most of the game will take place. But as Jimmy begins his first day, he finds out the horrible truth that this school's head boy is actually Gary Smith himself. I absolutely love the character of Gary Smith and I think him returning for revenge would be a pretty cool idea. We could expand on this character a little more and give him even more development than the first game. So Jimmy's basically back at square one in a new school where everyone's a dickhead and his arch enemy is out to get him once again. We'll get much more into this story later on but for now we gotta talk about the basics of the game, the gameplay, the thing you're gonna be spending all of your time doing basically. gameplay of the first Bully still holds up pretty fucking well despite its age, so I'm not going to sit here and say we need a complete overhaul or anything like that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Rather, I just want to expand on the already great ideas presented in the first game. Let's start with the combat as it's probably the most important aspect. You'll basically be able to do everything you could in the first one, it will just be slightly more intricate if that makes sense. Instead of just a basic punch option, you'll also have a dedicated heavy attack button. You can string these two together in order to pull off a series of combos. You'll still be able to do the different combos you could in the first game 
In fact, most of them will be unlocked from the start, but if you find a transistor, you'll be able to visit the old familiar homeless man and learn new combos of all different types of varieties, whether that's basic attacks, heavy ones, or even combos of the two. And maybe some combos that you can do while grabbing someone, who knows? Or maybe that would be for something like PE. Speaking of grabbing, it will be a lot more exciting than in the first game. You'll of course still be able to punch or even tackle them to the ground, and you could still toss them back, or you could use one of the many different environmental based takedowns the game will present you. Toss a motherfucker into a fish tank in the science building. Drop a shutter on a dude, shit like that. The first game already allowed for you to push them into trash cans, lockers, and even give them swirlies, but I think having a large variety of things you can do like this would keep the combat engaging all the time. And if you can't find an environmental takedown, then just slam a motherfucker into the wall like you could in the Warriors. Speaking of the Warriors, I think we should implement something similar to the rage mode here. After you've defeated several dudes in a row, you'll be given the option to activate your rage meter, which will basically make you the Incredible Hulk for like 15 seconds. And by that regard, you'll also be able to do shit like this because why not? It's cool. <laughs> you'll even be able to pull these off with the help of any allies you're fighting alongside with. We'll also be adding a few new weapons to the lineup. We're keeping basically all the old ones that are great, and we'll just be adding new ones into the mix. You'll be able to use a boomerang, a BB gun, a paintball launcher, a handheld taser, which can be upgraded to a stun gun to use on enemies at a distance. This and a retractable baton can be gathered from knocking out one of the school's security guards, which are basically the same as the preps in the first game except fucking scarier as they have weapons and can occasionally be seen driving a golf cart around the campus. But aside from that, you also have a few new fun throwables to use like a glue bomb which briefly traps your enemies in a layer of glue so you can beat them up before they can even fucking react. There's a glitter bomb which will momentarily blind people and send them running around like a chicken with his head cut off. You'll also have rotten eggs this time which can be created by leaving a carton of regular eggs in your inventory for way too long. They're similar to the normal eggs except they release a foul odor that will immediately make their victim vomit profusely. You also have spitballs in order to fuck with someone or lure them away from their friends. This could be used when trying to sneak around somewhere. Speaking of which, stealth will actually be somewhat a thing you can do now. Don't worry, there's not going to be any forced stealth segments like in the first game, but it will be an option sometimes if players choose to do it. And instead of just sneaking around, you'll also be able to quietly knock someone out like you could in GTA 5. Those are the main combat and weapon ideas I have right now, but if you have more, please feel free to let me know them below. But how about the actual map you'll be doing all this in? Are we going to change Bulworth? Well, the main land marks and islands we recognize from the first game will basically be left untouched, but we will be adding a couple new ones to spice it up a little. On the very outskirts of town there will be a kind of swampy looking area where only hillbillies and animals seem to live. There will also be a small abandoned area that's full of decrepit buildings and randomly violent NPCs. It's kind of like a ghost town. And lastly, we'll have a very small little city area, like nothing large, just like a couple blocks. And it will be on a new island similar to the other islands in the first game. It will feature crowded streets of cars and pedestrians walking on the sidewalk, some small skyscrapers and apartments, but it's mostly here to house the new private school, which I've already kind of summed up, but I'll do it again just to make it more clear. It's basically a super large school in comparison to Bulworth featuring multiple large buildings, parks, and two large dorm rooms that both have multiple stories, kind of like what they were planning in the beta of the original game. You'll of course be able to walk and talk and even court some of the other students, but it will be much more intricate this time. For example, you could walk up to a random dude, start a conversation, become friends, and from there you'll be able to invite him to hang out. And once you've met enough people, you'll be able to throw parties in like the dorms, beaches, or woods, something like that. And maybe for those parties, you could have a fun little mini game where you have to go around and collect a bunch of supplies and a time limit or something like that. Jimmy starts the game by dating Zoe and it's up to the player to maintain this relationship if they so choose to. You'll be able to take her on dates and buy her gifts, and it's not entirely limited to Zoe either. You could basically start a relationship with any girl who's straight and is Jimmy's age. And you'll also be able to date a few different dudes like in the first game. If you somehow piss your partner off enough times by getting them hurt or cheating on them, then they'll dump your ass. You'll be able to try to win them back, but the amount of success you'll see will depend on the person. Someone like Zoe would probably be really hard to win back as she's very okay being independent and won't put up with the player being an asshole to her. But some of the characters have lower standards and their love will be pretty easy to win back. You could also take it upon yourself to dump your own partner if it's not working out or if they're getting in the way of your own game. Or you could just ghost them until they break it off themselves, I guess. Asshole. Oh my god, they're, they're fighting over me. <laughs> Every person you speak to has a certain amount of respect for Jimmy. Some will start out hating you and can be turned into a friend over time, 
while some will start out liking you at first but slowly start to despise you as time goes on. Some characters will even hold grudges against you and will go out of their way to insult or even attack you. A big shout out to Mount Bennis for suggesting this in my community tab, but they had this really cool idea about selling or trading things like G&G cards or even cigarettes. It would give you more of an incentive to collect these things all across the map if you knew you'd be getting some cash for them later. And maybe if you sell cigarettes to a person enough times, they'll start to hit you up semi-regularly for them and you gotta manage all your buyers like in GTA Chinatown Wars. And if you get caught by a security guard with the cigarettes on you, he'll immediately compensate all of them. But if you don't want to make money that way, you could get a part-time job. I'm not joking. This is a role-playing action game where you're in high school. I think that should be a thing you can do. <laughs> go get a part-time job at the fast food place where you gotta do fun little mini games like you do in class, you know? You gotta be there a certain amount of times a week, let's say like two or three days depending on where you work, and you'll have a certain time window to get there or else you'll get in trouble for not showing up to work, and if you miss work three times or fuck up a shift three times by like doing whatever you do wrong, then they'll fire your ass. Or you can just quit. Let's talk about some classes too while we're at it. You'll still have basic ones like English and math that will help you do things like talk to people. And gym class will be updated too to give you more variety of things to do. Like one class will be wrestling, the next will be racing boats on the fucking lake. We also have new ones like welding, coding, or even taking care of sheeps and shit. You guys are probably wondering what the fuck I mean a second ago when I said racing boats. So let's talk about the many ways to traverse real quick. You'll still have the bike and skateboard obviously, and you'll even be able to do certain and trick like kick flips and grinds because please just let me grind things please and you'll even be able to unlock a cool ass go-kart like you could in the first game that you can get small upgrades on to make it faster or make it so that you fucking spin out other people on bikes and stuff like that. Just like in the first game, you'll be able to occasionally steal a moped, but you'll also be able to steal things like golf carts. And similar to the first game's bike races, you'll be able to enter challenges where you basically do bumper cars with the golf carts instead. I know that I said Jimmy was a senior in this game and is technically old enough to drive a car, but I feel like an addition like that would be kind of too big for this game. It wouldn't really work. At that point, it's just GTA, but in a high school with no guns. You'll also be able to drive small boats like dinghy. My dad gave me this boat. We'd come out here late at night when there was no one else on the lake, and then he'd be over there on the shore and he'd yell, Quit playing with your dinghy! Some jet skis, since in the first game you had no form of water traversal except for fucking swimming. So this way you'll be able to participate in jet ski races and even some dinghy fights where you can ram into each other and board the other people's ship on some fucking Pirates of the Caribbean. And lastly, you'll be able to use the bus or even train that runs through town if you want to fast travel and not fucking run everywhere, basically. And I got this idea from Michael Shu on Twitter, who has a dope-ass horror podcast, by the way, go check it out. He suggests that the map should have some zipline type things that Jimmy can use to quickly traverse from different points of the map. For example, you'll straight up be able to Kevin McAllister your way from the boys' dorm over to the main building or something like that, which would be so cool. Those are all the main ideas I have for the implementations into the gameplay. Like I said, all the way back at the beginning, I think the first game's gameplay is still really good. Like I revisit that shit at least once a year, but I think these ideas would just kind of add to the fun in a way. But now it's time to talk about the story. I kind of already summed up the premise, but I guess I'll run by it quickly again. There's a new expensive ass, nice ass school in town, and its headmaster is actually Miss Danvers, as she got tired of living in the shadow of a man who clearly didn't love her back and wanted to make her own name for herself, basically. Even though she's mainly interested in the power, I mean, there's literally a statue of her in the main interest of the fucking school. Bullworth Academy is getting even closer to the chopping block because half of its students and funding is completely gone. Not wanting to take this lying down, Jimmy decides to enroll in the new school and try to take it down from the inside. Starting this new school, he realizes the task is not going to be easy. These rich private school kids make the Bullworth Academy students seem like saints in comparison. There's once again several different cliques that you'll be facing throughout the game, but we're not just going to do the same ones again. That would be a bit late. So I actually have a few new click ideas at the ready, and once again, I'm down to hear more from you guys. I have five main click ideas I want to discuss. The first is the theater kids, who are pretentious and loud and think they're the shit. They all think they're bound to be famous because their parents gassed them up so much and paid for things like expensive acting lessons. Their fight style is very dramatic as if they're trying to mimic the onstage fights that they act out, and they're one of the weaker factions in the story, mainly proving as a threat based on their quick speeds and the fact that they're group up so fucking fast. You know what it is, bitch. Bang! 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 The ran by a loud, aggressive girl named Tammy, who might be short as hell, but has the pipes of a god. 
content. You also have the Goth slash Scene Kids who have been a popular fan suggestion for years now and I think it would be pretty at home here. I should clarify though that I'm not one of those people who hate Scoff just for existing. Some of the nicest people I've ever met tend to fall under this category. So when I say Goths, what I really mean are those kids who think wearing a lot of black, knowing like three MCR songs, and being an asshole in general makes you a Goth. Their fighting style is a lot more street orientated like greasers and townies from the first game. They also hate the school almost as much as Jimmy does so they ally with him briefly before they inevitably betray you later on. They're led by a couple named Zed and Crimson the most exaggerated emo posers of all time. Then you have the influencers slash chronically online kids. These dudes are rude, hypocritical dweebs who think that they're famous because they have one TikTok at 100k views or something like that, which means basically nothing. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're all generic, forgettable losers and they just don't realize it. These guys can be a threat though as most of them are in pretty good shape because they obviously take a lot of pride in their figure and appearance. You'll basically be fighting those gym bros who get mad at someone for walking in front of their camera. Their fighting style could be quick and proper like the preps before them. And their lead guy would be named Bryce who basically has all the personality traits of Bryce Hall. It's just Bryce Hall. Like just straight up imagine that dude as a character and bully and you get the idea. Champion coming! And instead of being ruled by the jocks like Bulworth Academy in the last game, the school's top dogs are fucking ROTC kids. ROTC, if you don't know, stands for the Reserve Officers Training Corps. And if you still don't know what I'm talking about, it's those kids from high school who dressed up like this and yelled at you for walking down the halls without a pass. <laughs> These guys are all buff and tough idiots who will constantly harass you throughout the game just like the jocks did. They'd be led by a guy named Damien who's the definition of a teacher's pet. The kind of dude who became a hall monitor in middle school and let the fucking power go to his head immediately. And their arch nemesis will actually be a friendly clique that you never have to start any beef with at all the stoner slash outcast. These guys just want to chill and have fun, but the ROTC kids keep making life on campus a living hell for them. So they're willing to help Jimmy sabotage the ROTC kids at any cost. They're like the nerds, but way, way less annoying, and they also won't betray you for literally no reason. And they'd be led by a girl named Bridget, who's basically one of the overly kind stoners you meet from time to time in real life. The game will once again be split into five chapters where you focus your attention on a new clique every time, just like in the first game. Chapter 1 would start with Jimmy enrolling into school and getting treated like shit by everyone. He eventually goes to the golf kids and makes peace with them and do a couple missions to earn their trust. You'll then team up with them for the remainder of the rest of the chapter in order to take down the theater kids. You'll do your typical bully missions of fighting and sabotaging while slowly pissing off the faction until you're ready to face them head on. You sabotage the act in any way you possibly can so these dorks look like idiots to the audience. After pissing them off enough, you have a final fight on the stage itself. Tammy will float around on these wires aiming and throwing props at you while her fellow theater kids attack you directly. Jimmy successfully defeats them and brings them under his wing to sabotage the other cliques. Chapter 2 begins with Jimmy trying to reconvene with the Goths so they continue their plan of taking over, only to find out they've seemingly cut him out of the operation completely and plan to take down the rest of the cliques by themselves, so they can kinda just do whatever they want. Jimmy obviously doesn't take kindly to this and sets his sights on them. Having gotten to know a few of them personally in the previous chapter, Jimmy uses his knowledge as a tool to sabotage them and turn them against each other. Eventually he'll confront the Goths in some abandoned factory in the middle of the ghost town that they like to hang out in and you'll literally have to have a guitar solo off with Zeb before he eventually gets mad and fucking sword fights you with his guitar. After defeating him, the Goss promise not to turn on you again. With two clicks down and two more to go, Gary starts to take note of Jimmy's presence, and you're basically being watched by the school and its staff from here on out, so you gotta be a little extra careful. Chapter 3 begins with Jimmy and his new ally setting their sights on the influencer kids, as Jimmy learns they've apparently been heavily slandering his name online during the entire time he's been at school, accusing him of being responsible for a whole lot of bad shit that goes on in the town. He also quickly learns that he can beat up these kids as much as he wants. It's not really going to change anything because the only thing that's really going to hurt them is attacking their reputation. So you spend the rest of the chapter sabotaging their good names at any given opportunity, whether that's in person or online. You'll do shit like take a picture of the most darkest secrets and spread that shit all over social media, the same way they would do to someone that they don't like. After distorting their reputations and making them all look like fools, the leader, Bryce, gets a couple cronies together and go to confront Jimmy. They chase Jimmy across the map and into the main city area where you're able to separate Bryce from his friends for a one-on-one -on -one fight. So you fight him in the middle of the city, now I'm talking like some Times Square ass shit, with countless pedestrians watching and even some of the screens displaying what's happening up close so people can see it. <laughs> Bryce gets his ass kicked in front of everyone, which is easily the worst thing that's ever happened in his posh ass life, so he finally agrees to behave. And now with the theater kids, goss, and influencers on his side, it's time for Jimmy to go after the real leaders of the school, the ROTC kids. Chapter 4 begins with Jimmy getting her 
harassed by the ROTC straight out the gate, and they're not about to let him pull that shit with them. Jimmy's not afraid of them, obviously, but he does know that he needs to be careful how he approaches this one, as these kids have a major influence on the school and what happens in it. If things go really wrong, they could get his ass expelled, which would ruin his entire plan. He knows he's going to need the help of those who have dealt with the ROTC many times before, and would know how to handle them. The stoners. You spend the majority of the chapter doing missions determined by the stoners. They'll come up with hella creative pranks and ways to embarrass the ROTC kids in front of the school. They'll try to keep their cool and act unaffected, but eventually they'll cave and go directly after Jimmy. You end their chapter by running around the entire school pissing off the ROTC kids in any way you can until a huge group of them is chasing you into the center of the main building, where you and all the stoners unload with them with every type of fucking weapon until there's none left standing. The leader Damien emerges amongst his defeated buddies, grabs a ball launcher, and challenges Jimmy to a battle. This fight's probably the most difficult in the game as it's a very big moment in the story. The whole game had been warned that despite his nicer appearance, he's an actual fucking psychopath on the inside and he proves it to you in this fight. As you have to chase him around the halls of the school as he hides and sneaks up on you constantly, you'll never know where he is or where he's going to attack from unless you're paying very close attention to your surroundings. Once you finally defeat him, he promises to stop abusing his power, and Jimmy celebrates with the stoners thinking he's finally won once again. Who's the baddest? Me! Who's the toughest? Me! Who's the man? Me! Me, losers! Me! The champion number one! I killed the best! I will beat the rest! He's gotten all the school's clicks under controls. Now it's time to take over and shut that bitch down. But chapter 5 begins unexpectedly. Jimmy wakes up in his dorm straight away to find the dudes in white coats waiting for him. They tell him that he's unstable and take him to the town's mental institution. Jimmy's never faced a setback like this before. He's panicking at the fact that he might have really lost everything this time. But he gets a visitor. They escort him into the visitation room where on the other side of the glass is Gary fucking Smith. He tells Jimmy that he's known about his plan the entire time and wanted to let him have his fun before taking it all away. Jimmy tells him that he still has all the support of the cliques, but Gary laughs and only says, Oh Jimmy, you think you can control people with violence and force? You are a moron, or however he talks, you know. <laughs> I just let these idiots think I'm giving them exactly what they want so that they'll do my bidding like a bunch of happy campers. He leaves Jimmy in a state of pure anger and anxiety as he has no clue what he should do next. You'll spend the first quarter of this chapter doing all kinds of jobs for inmates and employees so that they can give you the things you need to escape. To escape the asylum, you'll need to find a screwdriver, an employee uniform, and a keycard. Specifically, one for opening doors inside the building, so you can use it to get around easier but can't exit with it. But you'll need to get an employee suit to get inside of the staff area where you can then use the screwdriver on a vent and escape. Jimmy immediately gets back to the school and gets to work on trying to get everyone under control. He needs to convince all of his old Bulwark friends that he's not actually crazy despite being locked up. You're basically trying to build a small army of what remains of Bulwark students and the dropouts from in town in order to take the fight directly to the school's door. Once you have enough people on your side, you invade the school together so you and Russell can once again team up and exact justice and re-kick everyone's ass once again. Realizing what you've done, Gary tries to flee the property instead of directly confronting you like he did last time because we all know how that fucking went for him. So you chase him on a bike all the way down a long train track before he eventually leaps onto a moving train. You chase the train for a few minutes before jumping onto it as well and you and Gary have your final showdown on top of a fucking moving train. The fighting against him in the first game was already super fucking dope and had really high stakes, so I didn't want the final battle in this game to be weak by any means. Hopefully a fucking train fight is cool enough. You'll have to dodge signs and different things occasionally, and also Gary's become a better hand-to-hand -hand brawler since we last saw him, having spent a lot of time preparing for this rematch. By the time you win the fight, the train will have looped all the way around the town, ending up right back at the school again. Russell parks a truck in front of the train like a madman and ditches it right before the train slams into it. This causes the train to derail and smash through the outer wall of this school and completely tear down the statue of Miss Danvers before coming to a complete stop in the center area right in front of the main building. Gary tries to scurry away but Jimmy catches up to him and gives him one last speech. He tells Gary that it doesn't matter how smart or manipulative he is, Jimmy will always find a way to defeat him as Jimmy actually has something worth fighting for, his friends and his life that he takes so much pride in. It motivates him to fight back. Meanwhile, Gary is only motivated by his selfishness and anger and can never truly get close enough to people to have proper allies that he can rely on. So Gary gets shipped off to the mental institution, everyone gets along again and Jimmy and his friends can start living comfortably. 
And instead of having the new school shut down, it instead just becomes a secondary academy under the Bullworth name. Travel Snitch running one and Danvers running the other. When Jimmy once again shares a final kiss of whoever his partner is, and the credits begin the roll. And that's it. That's my entire pitch as of right now. Let me know what you think, and once again, I know I already said this, but please let me know what you would want to see in a Bully 2. I'm genuinely curious and love hearing from other people in the community about stuff like this. But if you enjoyed this pitch, maybe consider subscribing and liking the video. And not entirely sure when it's gonna happen but I do know my next video game pitch will be on Sleeping Dogs 2 because it's a goddamn shame we never got that. And if you're from the future and Bully 2 did come out, please don't come here just to tell me I'm stupid. How was I supposed to know? How was I supposed to know what was in the game? You are telling me I was supposed to know Jimmy dies? I, I fucking I'm not actually on the writing team, you know that, right guys? <laughs>